accommodations. But until today, we always got our information from the supporters group, people from Digitale Gesellschaft, uh, Chaos Computer Club and others who do great work in supporting the initiative. But uh, we're happy that today we have uh, we have Eben Chu here, uh, who is uh, one of the founders of Refugee Emancipation and uh, can tell us more about the idea and the history and the work of Refugees Emancipation. Welcome, Eben. Thank you very much for giving me um, this opportunity to be here because I think it has taken us uh, 14 years to really get the attention of the civil society. And I, I just want to relate a little bit about my experience, which is tied to the whole idea of refugees emancipation, what difficulties we've had, what are the challenges we went through, and today, I could stand here and for the past one year or six months, there's so much concern from the civil society realizing that internet is very important in uh, the fight for a better living conditions for refugees. I mean, I just for the past six months, I've attended a lot of workshops or seminars and people talking about how they could help refugees through internet. And for me, that is really great. Because um, we realized some years ago that it is not only a tool f that could give access to cheaper means of communication for refugees, which is very important because they need to communicate with their family, which was very expensive for us using mobile telephones. but that it can be a means for us to bypass most of these legal barriers which the system puts on the way for refugees. And I will just tell you some of the refugees who, through refugees emancipation, through the internet cafe, could, go, could do correspondent courses, could develop careers, writing skills, you don't really need a statue sometime for you to change the aspect, basic aspects of your life. If you can really connect to the people in the civil society who could provide you what you need, especially um, getting involved in the internet community. Actually, um, the idea of refugees emancipation came because we were trying to find alternative ways on um, how we could strengthen ourselves in a very difficult legal situation, but on the other side, a very difficult civil society. One should say that. And most of the time, being in the peripheries, um, how could we bridge this gap? This gap? we felt that internet is a very important instrument. So we came to Berlin ourselves to learn how to use it and to see how we could also empower other refugees with this knowledge. But of course, it has not always been us refugees. There have been a lot of people who have been behind it, a lot of people from the civil society. And the other day, I was surprised to see some people like Electra that we met about 14 years ago when I was still going to low tech to learn where I got my first internet uh, email address. To learn basically how you can get an email or browse, get basic stuff. There are people like Dimitri Kleiner, who set up our first website about 14 years ago, and I met him 10 years, almost 12 years after. Um, there are wonderful people, students from the Technical University, and I, Ron John, 
Urish, who spent hours, days in refugee homes, fixing up the computers, transporting the computer. Nobody knows about it. Ulf, who spends a lot of time, he's the one who, when we got the computers, he replaces them from Windows to Linux. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of guys who've been doing all these works from Prince Lau to Rathenau to Bad Belzig to Eisenhutenstadt to Potsdam to Rehfelde to Luckenwalder, Berlin Helen Marienfelde. All these guys, they have been doing wonderful work. And today, we are really grateful to the supporters team to Lars and Monique and all the others who finally said we recognize 14 years after what you are trying to do and that we should bring it to the center and try to support you. Most of our support has come from the civil society or from students till now. But we knew since 40 years ago that internet was very, very essential. It was very, very useful. And what we tried to do, or what the first step we tried to do was, since we had the residence flesh law, which could not allow you to go out of the land crisis, we were trying to find a means, how could we then bring you into the so-called gefeliche or socially quarantined places called refugee camps, how we could create a free place, a free flat, uh, platform where you could come and transfer this knowledge to us. Every day from all the internet cafes we have, it, we have access um, a minimum of about 3,000 refugees use the project. I will tell you in a month through the different internet cafes or even more. We are a political organization and we think that we should develop in the political aspect. We think that people or of the civil society of the internet cafe should become more and more involved in coming into these places and helping us to develop how to create different forms of platforms in which we can expose, not only expose, but use these platforms in terms of alternative education, in terms of empowering ourselves, but also to bring out the living conditions of how the refugees live in these places. Um, for us, it has been a big challenge. It's a big challenge running these places because politically, the Himes are supposed to be meant for intimidating the refugees and um, giving them less access to the civil society so that they will find life more difficult for themselves and they can leave. For us, it has been difficult because you have a civil society sometimes which is very patronizing and which really is very careful when refugees become too political or try to create an opinion. So, We've got a lot of challenge, even within the aspects of the civil society, but also a lot of challenge from the political, the people who make the decisions concerning refugees, which means that it's difficult for us to really expand in terms of putting more and more internet cafe, because the political structure refuses this kind of um, 
creating this kind of spaces where refugees could then become directly involved of bringing out their situation. And we think that these are the things which, if the internet community could um, focus much more on working with refugees, a kind of a political um, pressure can be built in which this kind of spaces will only increase. Refugees should have more and more access, not only of internet, but how can they use internet to better their living conditions or empower themselves, but more as a political organization to, I would say, get them more involved in the political discussion about refugees. So what we would like, what we have done in the past 14 years is of course uh, creating these spaces. But we've had these difficulties which I've tried to explain to you that um, politically we've been impeded to really develop the space much more. We've had a less concern from the civil society about accepting this fact that refugees should become, or they should have more and more access or more and more knowledge. But it has changed, as I said in the beginning, for the past one year, from what I have seen in terms of how you are becoming more and more concerned and you're realizing that you have to develop another level of connections with refugees. And we are very grateful from Refugees Emancipation. I'm very thankful. We will definitely like to see such spaces increase in the future. We want to develop more and more internet cafes. But we want it to be a political notion and an acceptance that um, refugees should um, get this, get internet access, but also have the spaces. Um, I don't know what um, what exactly, um, since the organization in itself has already been presented here before, but I would just want to say that many challenges are there to, for us to really um, give access to refugees. I would say politically, it is very important that we build more and more pressure or put more and more pressure to politicians to, act, to allow organizations like Refugees Emancipation or other structures to give access to refugees, to give access to internet to refugees. But also, we want to see you becoming more and more involved in networking with us, in coming to these spaces and seeing how we could develop alternative platforms. Especially, as I have said, we are a political organization, so we'd definitely like to see things which would develop in the direction of radio online for refugees from the internet cafes, blogs, Facebook pages, things which will really bring out what the refugees are undergoing in most of these isolated areas. Because we think that it is in the implementation of the law that most of the abuses on refugees is being done. And if they have the capacity and the knowledge, and of course the access to the internet, and with the training and the support from you, it will be easy for all of us from Eisenhutenstadt to Prenzlau to the most remote places to see on a daily basis what's going on around. That is our goal. Our goal is that we could train refugees, we could open up 
in these very difficult places, we could open up possibilities for refugees to have such um, capacities. And I believe that we all here, we have that what it takes. Because if we, when we started refugees emancipation, we didn't have any money, we didn't have any budget. All we thought was internet is not very difficult to put. So what is there? So we realize the first thing is that is to give ourselves the knowledge how to run a small cafe. The second thing is to look for friends or supporters who can then pay for the bills or who could donate us the pieces. But the most difficult side was how to get the permission from the people who are responsible for the refugees, which is the Auslander beholder or the people who run the Himes. So when we came to Berlin, our interest was, first of all, let's not give them the excuse to say that, well, we don't want somebody from outside to come and do it. So we can tell them we can do it ourselves because we can run it, we have the knowledge. So that's why we came to Berlin to get the knowledge on how to run an internet cafe, how, what do you do with a computer? And then we talk to our supporters, please, we need computers. And they give it to us. Will you pay for the bills? It's not a big deal. Even though in those days, most of the times, there was no DSL. We were paying using call by call. And then the most difficult side was to get the permission, of course, from the foreign office, from the Auslander Biola and the Heim Bay tribes, if they could allow us to bring internet into the Flushlings Heim. And it was done basically like that. But of course, we could not move to the second level, which was to empower the refugees and use the internet room for basic alternative knowledge. How do you use an internet to get information? How do you know what you can, who you can contact through the internet? And of course, the third stage, which we don't talk a lot, which we, in Refugees Emancipation, we stand for, is the political side. How do you use the internet to develop platforms, political platforms? And we think that uh, it has been slow. That's why I started by trying to tell you that we were not very encouraged by the support from the civil society, because if the civil society had really seen, would have been far, would have built a huge databases of lots of refugees who have computer knowledge. And today, just like what is done sometimes in the third world, on using it for democratic change, would have brought a lot of things by now, or changed a lot of things about the living conditions or how refugees live on a daily basis. I will say that in most of the Himes where we have internet cafes, we've had a lot of trouble with the Heim administration. Why? Because they realize that we are political. We could report on a daily basis what happens. And this is what is very important. It's important because when you come into these spaces, you are questioned, you are not allowed to do certain things, you cannot take a camera in there and just talk to the people. But when the people inside have the knowledge and the capacity to basically understand how they can bring out these things from their perspective, then you don't need to come there. You just need this space which we get through a contract which each time where we have an internet cafe that we operate independently from the Heim administration. You don't need to pass through them to come to the internet cafes. Which gives us the freedom to learn whatever and do whatever we want to do in these spaces. And this is important that then we can report things from these spaces. I'm not saying that this is the only way, but we have found that in most times which we operate, 
there's a lot of care on how issues are being done. And I think if we report more things from the peripheries on how is the living conditions of the refugees on a daily basis, the authorities will become more and more conscious. This is the political side of why we think, we believe, that creating such spaces is very important. Of course, we will need to empower people individually, which we do, computer courses. How do you write a variable? How do you get a house? But what is more important for us as a self-organized refugee group is to use the internet as a means for political empowerment for the refugees. And that's why I'm here today to say thousands of refugees have gone through refugees emancipation. Actually, sometimes I walk on the street and I meet a guy, he says, don't you know me? I say, oh, I'm from Prince Lao, Internet Cafe. Oh, that question. And um, it has made us to, to create a kind of network which is very powerful. And I believe that if we had got the finances, if we had got the support to develop more of these spaces into orientating people how they could participate and not only being told what to do, but they could get the knowledge on how this society functions, especially with the internet, using the internet as a means to bring out your situation. We would have had a lot of people who are politically involved, not only on the streets, but on the internet. So first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me here because it has taken a long time, but we are here, we are there. And I want to say we need you more. We need to develop such ways. You must not only go through. We have a refugee who is today a journalist. He didn't go through. He didn't have an open thought. But he went through the alternative means. We have Jim Memtinga, who did a master's program through the Internet Cafe in Eheim, through correspondent courses. So people can really rise if they are supported from the civil society using the internet. And we think that that's the way forward. We can create huge platforms. We can, people can do a lot of stuff. We tried it already and we know it works. If you transfer the knowledge to the people where they can operate within the spaces that they feel comfortable, and that they feel confident that they can relate their living conditions by themselves. All we have to do is to give them what it takes, the material, the logistics, the finances. We've, we've done it for 14 years and we know it works. And it's possible if there is a huge support. Thank you. Well, thank you, Eben, for coming here, uh, for your wonderful work, and also for giving us the bigger picture, political dimensions, questions of freedom and emancipation. I would guess there's some reactions, questions or comments from, from the audience.